like kind of early early on the restaurant existed we just started drinking for net yeah. and there's weeks we'll go through four or five bottles it can get a little out of hand sometimes i'm not gonna lie we get four for net. you either hate it or you love it there's no in between with it so <laughs> where are you starting on top from hey, let's do a shot again I've never met anybody who said, oh, I think it's okay. <laughs> My favorite one was the dudes from uh, Battersby who thought they could drink for net. You should repeat that again. <laughs> My favorite munchies <laughs> was... I would absolutely, absolutely love to go head to head with both of those dudes. I'll do it. We could do for net. Like for net to for net. I'll do two to one to those. Two to one. No, you need one. So they said an official challenge. I feel like those guys <laughs> just can't drink for net. No, like... You go around to a Brooklyn bar too, and you have a shot of Fernet. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But like, I don't care. Drink this. I'm Eric Anderson. I'm the chef at the Catbird Seat in Nashville, Tennessee. It is a small restaurant. We can seat 32 people. It's really small, intimate. The idea of the restaurant was that in a traditional kitchen, when you're a chef and you're at the pass and you're plating people's food, then you pass it off to a server, and your relationship with that food is kind of gone at that point. You know, it's up to the server to explain. It's up to the server to deal with any problems that might arise. The idea of this is we cut out the middleman, more or less. We're cooking the food, we're plating the food, and then we're presenting it to the guests. We're forcing ourselves to see it through to the end. There's no wall to hide behind if they like it or they don't like it, you know? So it's out in the open. I'm really proud of what these guys do every day. Like these guys are, they're animals. Like they challenge themselves every single day to do better than they did the day before. Four guys, we do 40 people a night, 14 servings. That's it, yeah. My two and a half years here, it's been like, the city's super supportive. They want good things to happen. They want to watch the city grow. They want to watch it evolve and change in positive ways. Myself and a guy named Josh Haberville, we were just cooking together in Minneapolis. Ben Goldberg, who's our partner in the restaurant, he uh, had the space above the cocktail lounge open up. And oddly enough, my family lives down here. So it's kind of a win-win thing for me. Yeah, and that's kind of how it started. And we did the build out upstairs. It used to be a hair salon. We get whole ducks in from a place called Wedge Oak Farms out in Lebanon, Tennessee. They're super nice, so we do it twice in the menu. There'll be a tureen that we make out of the thighs. We grind, it's really kind of a rustic style French tureen. And it's glazed with creme fraiche on the top. Later on, we do a, a duck breast and then gizzard and heart dish with turnips. So we use kind of the whole, the whole bird throughout the menu. Tom Bayless has been there since day one with me. He's uh, worked the snack section and desserts, and he's been doing that since the very beginning. He's awesome. Trevor Morin would be my sous chef. He uh, came from a place called Noma out in Copenhagen. Alan Labon, who's, Alan's worked for me on and off since he was about 17 or 18 years old. I'll be going back to Minneapolis, uh, where I was at about eight years. I can't, not a ton of details yet, but yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I'm really stoked to get back. Last night we brought out Dower Ellis, who is a friend of ours. He used to work at the Catbird Seat. Now he's one of the cooks at Husk. He came out with me and Tom, and we all met at the restaurant, had a couple drinks. Okay, maybe the greatest mixer for bourbon in the world. It smells like if you had a grandpa and he had an old leather truck, and you opened it, like that's yeah. exactly what that smells like. It's correct. Yeah. Man, yeah. man in the mirror. Dude, you're like fucking Christopher yeah. Walken of cooks. He's a dance man, a song guy, he acts, he fucking... Me and Trevor sing Man in the Mirror and karaoke, our voices combined sound exactly like the, the black woman that sings on Gimme Shelter. Let's see the video. See our voices come together? Yeah, that's the backing track. That's not the backing track. No, that's the backing track. I think the guy just turned up the backing track. Because you were so horrible. You wanted to play. You wanted I don't to play. know, man. You have good moves. You're, you are your stage presence. I'm not going to argue with that. If a genie popped out of a bottle, I would. my three wishes would all be be a great karaoke singer. That's one wish. <laughs> we went to Roth and Daughters where we met Philip, had a few bites to eat. It's like walking in my uncle's cabin. 
Oh yeah, this is Phil. Phil, this is everybody. <laughs> all the food that we do here are all from daughters. It's kind of based on the vernacular of Italian food, but it's not authentic by any means. I'm not Italian. I didn't work in Italy. So we kind of interpret the food with what we have available around us. Nashville has great ingredients, really cool people, and it's like easy for us to do what we want to do, and it's affordable. Like, to open a restaurant in New York or a major city is it's really difficult, whereas here, like you can have a smaller budget, make shift, do things yourself, and, and put it together. Should I just put a bottle of Fernet on the table? Oh, no. Yeah. No, I shouldn't do that. It's too early. Yeah, uh, do you drink beer? I like yeah, shitty American beer. I love the fact that I respect my girl. You know, I love that shit, but like, I just, the older I get, the more I just reside myself in the fact that I like shitty American beer. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to open up a bunch of cans and like turn all the microwaves on for you guys. Like, we're going to roll out the red carpet. <laughs> this food is just fantastic. It's like food you want to eat, you know, like food I love you. It's like super comforting. The flavors are just spot on. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I guess like the difference between this and the average tartare is we don't put egg yolk in it. There's no mayo, nothing like that. It's really clean and lean. Because the beef has that like dry aged blue cheese flavor. We don't want to cover that up. This is the Capazana New Harvest olive oil. Pepper. Oh. The new tartare on the menu we had, which is fantastic. Do the juice now. <laughs> Jared, do you have one of No, just take one. I'm just gonna eat these. No. I want this one. So good. I love that. Raw beef is one of the greatest things. No, I know, right? <laughs> Right you get three more for nets. Three more for nets? Sure. I guess that was stuff. Is. Dude, Dude teeny. You know those fucking lamb meatballs? Those are fucking gorgeous. Like, Romesco and uh, like burnt broccoli. And now I'm drunk. Just now. We have so much more to eat tonight. We picked Philip up. We all crammed into the car. Oh, God. I am so excited and so fearful of what's about to happen to us. Husky is Sean Brock's restaurant here in Nashville, Tennessee. Dude, we're gonna they're going to destroy food. food <laughs> they're going to uh, yeah, food uh, fucked is exactly time. totally destroyed. But yeah. we're going to have fun. Yeah. And there might be a Michelada. <laughs> Man, it's like think about a dead baby. Like it's I okay. Get out of here. It's, no, <laughs> shut up. No, Let's get in. I'll let you off if you promise you'll stop talking about trusting babies. Okay. Hey, I'm done. But Tom also has this wonderful alter ego called Cock Daniels. Yeah. Who uh, will yelp? Y yes, yelp. Yeah. Do yeah. we say yelp? Cockney's medium is yelp, and he puts out the most amazing, amazing reviews on yelp. It's a medium for any beat off to write whatever they yeah, fucking want. Yeah, exactly. You know? So this beat off right here uh, <laughs> decided to write <laughs> reviews. The restaurant's not important. Like the food's not even important. It's what it's happens. What happens before yeah. and after. I uh, went to Husk, uh, Morgan was there, who's Sean's chef, he runs the restaurant for him on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, my name is Morgan McGlone, I'm the chef de cuisine here at Husk Nashville. Originally started in Charleston, basically a celebration of southern ingredients. Just kind of just got crushed with food, man, like, that always happens there. Crispy pig's tails, then AC, soy pepper glaze, we play on general soy sauce. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's just like super delicious southern food, you know? And rice cakes, Carolina gold rice cakes. Super old recipe, I think it's one of the oldest known recipes, like that Carolina gold rice cake from like the 1850s or something like that. Husk fermented cheese and Bob Woods to your ham. Yeah, yeah. Bob Woods ham. Y'all do a ham with them, right? That's why we didn't send you guys ham tonight. Now we have the oysters with lovage. These things are getting pretty full at that point. I'm trying to think what else we have. I was pretty drunk here. Chicken gizzards. Oh, nice. Confused with um, African mustard onions. Oh, they're so good, right? Oh. <laughs> I feel these on the, in the embers on the grill. Dude, those are so fucking good. Uh, the fried chicken at Husk is... One, it's cool to get it because they don't do it a lot. Holy shit. 
Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. No, no, no. This is sick, dude. <laughs> Yeah. It's fantastic, you know. They're, they're, it's spicy. It's like, it's just he the the crust on it's just perfect. It's just perfect, you know. Yeah, we keep it in flour for like at least two hours. We toss it in five fats: country ham fat, chicken fat, lard, butter. I'm really hoping he didn't reveal too many secrets that'll get him in trouble. Oh, fuck you. It's also served it with a 43 ounce, seven week age ribeye. Right, whoa, 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 bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you gotta, 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 Tomorrow is going to be difficult. <laughs> no, tomorrow is going to be difficult. I scheduled myself on the oh, butcher. You're like this close to vacation. I'm very honored to be able to do the show. Work with Eric on the show. How's that okay? Yeah, okay. what was the makeup, boys? I was sweating like a motherfucker up in there, man. How are we all going to fit? Morgan is uh, a bigger dude, much like myself. And we also have Baxter who has one of the nicest beards in Nashville. And he's not a small man either. Philip Dower, who may be the thinnest person out of the bunch. So it was just, we could have just put him anywhere in the car. And then Tom. Beautiful. It was pretty tight. That's like once those two relieve the pressure, Dower's gonna bleed out. And then we went to 308. 308, it's a bar that, uh, I don't think it's possible to leave there sober. We always go there, we always get the last word, which is a chartreuse drink. Um, but that kind of just puts you under at that point, you know, like you don't at that point that you don't need to have that. You just want it. And it's just, you know, you're done. Back to Catbird seat. Where's Dalpound? Where's Dollar? I'm like in a weird state right here. Uh, I'll read a cock Daniel. Read, read a cock tea. Cock tea. Okay, wait. Oh, God. Dude, all right. Read a cock tea, bro. We need a voice. But can we all just right. all agree, like, <laughs> fuck everyone on Yelp? No. Tom Bayless, cock tea, okay. okay. Yelp Cockney. review. Yeah. I woke among the dead to a cackling vulture somewhere between division and hell. I despise Midtown. I avoid it like redheads and water. It's the pale blister on the underside of one's dick. Bowling with the tasteless rage of a squandered business degree. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever feel like... Okay, so we're gonna just take a break here, Phil? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like when, when Homer was like saying the Iliad around a campfire, somebody <laughs> interrupted him. And Did, it. Was Homer a fuck? Uh, so we're going back to the catbird seat. A little more food, a little more friends, a little more drinks. And maybe a couple less of dollars expense. <laughs> The max is eight people. What happened on New Year's? Yeah. Tom Bayless is kind of a genius at making like really, really trashy southern food, like really good and in the best way possible. He did those bolognese and ribs for hours, then glazes them with uh, barbecue sauce he makes with Dr. Pepper and uh, habaneros or ghost peppers. Actually, he calls it Dr. Ghost Pepper. You're gonna get you're gonna get smoked bologna with freedom cheese and special sauce. Start with Velveeta and loads in. Uh, Alan did uh, beef tartare, pretty classic beef tartare, which is, tartare is one of my favorite things to eat. Like, there's just something about eating raw beef that's, it's amazing, you know. Trevor did some scrambled eggs with a little bit of white truffle, and just had a bunch of friends over. Ask 
crack of dawn on the first Monday after Christmas. A slightly thick blonde undergrad in a Patagonia jacket walked a puppy towards Centennial Park. As a middle-aged man carried a briefcase, moved in the other direction, I wanted to wear their skin. I wanted to <laughs> taste their blood. And I sat down at the bar, ordered a Miller High Life and a pimento cheese on French bread. And by the way, that's about as uh, fusion as I get. Now you might be thinking, Cock, uh, Cock D, uh, what, what the hell, High Life? Uh, what about your beloved Paps Blue Ribbon? And I'll tell you this, my good friend, drinking Paps on the west side of the river is like going ass to mouth after a marathon taco crawl up and down Nolensville Pike in the middle of July. You can do it, but it just doesn't taste the same. <laughs> 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 <laughs>